Bobby Wilson is one talented performer with one hell of a story. When you catch a Bobby Wilson performance, you'll see the resemblance to, ah, that's where the story begins. Our Kids of Legends series continues on the Mark Berman Show. His website for tour dates, merch, news, social media is bobbybrookswilson.com. Now, meet the man. This is Bobby Wilson. Welcome to the Mark Berman Show. Thank you, Mark. It's an honor to be here. How are you? I'm doing great. And you, wow, I, there's just so much. And there's so much that even though you're a worldwide performer and you perform stage, you perform cruise ships, you perform everywhere, you have a story that really the roots are Cherry Hill, New Jersey a little bit and a little bit Atlantic City. And we're going to talk about that. So, a, lot of, a lot of Atlantic City. <laughs> So so you were born in New York State. You wound up in the foster system of South Carolina. Can you take it from there? Yeah, I, uh, um, I was given up. At, uh, my mom gave me up uh, at, uh, at birth. Um, I, I, I don't know how long I was with her, but um, I was um, placed in a foster home uh, probably about between one to three months old and uh, uh, kind of had uh, a rough time as a, as a kid because I didn't know I was sick. And... Um, I didn't know that I was sick, but I, I was. I had the uh, intestinal problems, and uh, I had the uh, rickets of the bones. They had to break my legs and place me in, uh, in what you call a well, a cast for a while, and then from there to the braces, like the Forrest Gump braces that I wore uh, up until I was six or seven years old, and um, and and then uh, and, you know, I, I, and I dealt with uh, uh, respiratory problems. Uh, from childhood and all the way up to uh, about 12 years old before it all went away. So I struggled during my childhood not knowing uh, if I was going to make it through childhood because some of the doctors uh, uh, didn't think I would make it. And also uh, they had me labeled uh, um, retarded, actually, because I had a huh. speech impediment problem. Uh, so uh, through my childhood I had a lot of, of uh, a, a craziness, but I thought it was normal, you know, because the, the kids, my mom always had between seven to ten kids in the foster home, so we, the, her, her natural daughter, uh, to play songs from, she, she had a stereo, high five stereo. So I would uh, sit in the corner and rock to the music of B.B. King and uh, Wilson Pickett, Otis Redding, uh, Sam Cooke, I remember. Uh, Tyrone Davis, I remember uh, Jackie Wilson, of course, uh, and, and the music went on. I remember rocking back and forth, Aretha Franklin, and uh, uh, all the all the singers of that time. And so, um, and that was that was my medicine. Plus, uh, gospel music that played on Sundays, I, I rocked to the gospel music. I remember uh, Soul Stirs, which was Sam Cooke's group, and and I remember uh, Mighty Clouds of Joy, and, and uh, um, uh, Lady, the big lady, uh, my head of the Jackson. It's, uh, I love the music, and I, I remember rocking to the music even when I couldn't speak because I couldn't breathe. And, uh, so now? So from there, uh, yeah. I was able to, you know, one second, but between <clears throat> 10 and 12, I started playing, was able to go outside and play. And I become a, became a runner through because I started running with my mom, Hayden. Uh, when I was able to start walk, to really walk. Uh, even though I went to school during this time, I had the braces on. Uh, um, I used to run a lot. I had these heavy weighted shoes on. And um, it didn't start for me music. I got, the music was inside of me, and it was part of my healing. But uh, I'll tell you what, what made me really excited was when I saw the Jackson 5 on an American dance band. That's when mm-hmm. I freaked out. And I, I knew I wanted to be a singer. Back then, but everybody told me to shut up. I couldn't sing, so I didn't. <laughs> so I didn't. I mean, I became uh, very, very uh, shy, and, uh, and I didn't sing much. But after, after my, in my teenage years, but I did do a lot of uh, talent shows. And now I'm a fast forward. I joined the Navy, and uh, because uh, I, I, I got married very young, so I joined the Navy, and. Uh, Started the family. My plan was to stay in the Navy for 30 years. Uh, retire fat, dumb, and happy, and buy myself a trailer, but and drive around the states. But that didn't happen. Tell God your plan. 
he laughed. So after 10 years in the Navy, I passed kidney stones. So my health came back oh. to haunt me again. I passed eight kidney stones. And oh. I found myself on a medical discharge, which uh, found me, uh, which when I got my medical discharge, it was in Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, and I started hanging out with uh, a lot of the Hawaiians and uh, the uh, Samoans because they thought I was Samoan. When I, joined the Navy, when I joined the Navy, I was 120 pounds. When I got out, I was 240. Wow. And they thought I was some more. So anyway, <laughs> I started hanging out with them. They took me to a karaoke bar, which I thought was a Japanese truth bar. And um, I started singing in the, Jap- the karaoke bar with my Hawaiian friends, never knowing that they were all stars. Brother Is, the Casimir brothers, CC and Capono, uh, sure. Melvin Lee. All these people were big, big stars, and I thought they were just karaoke people. Sure. Anyway, I, was, I hang with them when a guy named Peter Hernandez walked in. A guy named Peter Hernandez walked in and offered me a job uh, with their with their group uh, called the Love Notes, a doo wop group. Peter was from Brooklyn, New York. Uh-huh. So Peter had a seven uh, man group, seven ladies, and a little boy named Bruno. They took me in, 240 pounds, and, and molded me into a doo wop singer. With a pompadour. When I went in, I had no hair and a skinny mustache. And to this, and and we have to tell our audience, you still do not know who your father is at this point. No, at this point, I didn't know my dad is. I did by that time meet my mom, but we didn't talk about my my dad at all, and basically said he was unknown. And so, um, and I actually, for some reason or another, never asked. You know, I just didn't think about it. So um, sure. It was only my and you mother. had me, and you had met your birth mother, but yeah, yeah. You, like you just said. Yeah, I met my birth mother in my in my in my Navy years when I was in, you know, in the Navy. But um, but anyway, um, so I start um, I start with the love notes and uh, Peter Hernandez and his family took me in. Bernie, his wife, a uh, wonderful singer, and they all took me in. And of course, I became very attached to little Bruno because I was going through a personal hardship myself at the time. I was going through. Divorce. My son was the same age as little Bruno. Um, my son was six years old, and Bruno was six. And so I kind of latched on to him. But he turned out, when I, when I was watching the little kid, I thought he was, he was a superstar already because he was performing as young Elvis at the uh-huh. time, baby Elvis, and he was known as the world's youngest Elvis impersonator. And uh, he had been on every major television show, um, the David Letterman show and blah, 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 uh, all the shows. And he was in two, two movies, so he was a little star. And I will never forget the day he looked at me and said, hey, uh, how long have you been in the show business? And I said, oh, this is my third day. And he looked at me and said, oh, I've been in three years, and turned around and walked away. (laughs) 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 I was like, you little snot. Well, he turned out to be the pop star Bruno Mars. Of course. And and so Bruno Bruno and I worked together until he was 17, and then Bruno went to to, uh, L.A., Yes, and I do have to say this. We're going to disclose who your father is shortly, but yes. we do have to say this. There would not be a Bruno Mars if it wasn't for the likes of your father, James Brown, period. Uh, right? Michael Jackson. And, and, and then some well, places. Michael Jackson, yeah. There'd be no Michael Jackson if there was right, no yeah, my, my dad, your father and James yeah. Brown, too. Yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 because they all, you know, watched them and copied them and wanted to be like them. So. You bet. And, and of course, uh, what... So Bruno, Bruno's dad, uh, you know, I don't think he he, he noticed it, my my look. So people in the audience started saying, "Hey, you look like Jackie Wilson. I wonder if you sound like." Him. And I remember saying, "Oh, I know who Jackie Wilson is. I just don't know what he looks like. I know his songs. I knew Lonely Teardrops. I knew Your Love Is Lifting Me Higher, and Dogging Around. I, mean, I remember those three songs. So my sister would, uh, my old, my older sister would be crawling all over the floor every time." His songs came on the radio. She'd be screaming and crying and rolling all over the floor. So I knew who he was. Yeah. And so, right. <laughs> so, so right. I remember when I got, uh, I've been on the group a couple of years, and I said, hey, Pete, I'd like to you know, sing a lead on, on the Jackie Wilson stuff. And he goes, oh, well, you already got a guy that's doing it. He said, well, let me sing lead. So he finally let me sing it. And, uh, and um, that's when the doors opened. It's like, it's like I remember the first time I did Lonely Kid Drop with the Love Notes. Uh, the room was spinning around. It was like I went through a whirlwind, a metamorphosis, and uh, yeah. and people started seeing my dad in me, 
and uh, and uh, then I, uh, Paul Revere of the Raiders and John Stewart, producer of a show called Legends in Concert, walked in, and uh, they wanted to see Bruno because they were opening the show in Waikiki, and they saw me. Of course, they, oh. they, they loved Bruno, and they, they hired Bruno to do some Elvis stuff with the Elvis guys. But And this is Bruno Mars we're talking about, so the people Bruno know. Mars, yes, go ahead. Right? Yep. But, but then they hired me. Well, Paul Revere just grabbed me by my ear and said, Listen, Bob, do you know who you are? Do you know who you look like? Do you know who you sound like? And I was like, No. <laughs> he, goes, <laughs> he goes, I want you to be my Jackie Wilson in, in my show. We don't have a Jackie Wilson. You got to be my Jackie Wilson for Legends in Concert. And I said to Paul, I'm not an impersonator. I'm an artist. But thank you for the for the offer. And I walked away. And he was like, you look And he grabbed me back and said, you know who I'm talking about? <laughs> I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah, I know who Jackie Wilson. He's the guy that started it all. Paul was like, super excited. He said, he said, I want you to come over to my show and watch the show. Then you tell me if you want to do it. Or not. So it took three times. With Paul stopping me in different places in Hawaii, uh, saying, I want you to do Jackie Wilson. So finally, I went to the show. And when I went to the show, I was hooked because I saw the Michael Jackson and Marilyn Monroe and all these people that were so good recreating these stars that I was dumbfounded. And I remember mm-hmm. saying to Paul, I said, Paul, I don't know how to begin to become Jackie Wilson. And Paul says, just keep being you. You're already him. You just don't know it. And I was like, huh? He said, <sighs> wow. Just, he said, just keep being you. You're already him. You just don't know it. He goes, I've been watching you since I've been here in Hawaii. And you talk, laugh, walk. You're the living, breathing Jack Wilson, as far as I'm concerned. He said, so he said, he told me a little uh, exercise. I want you to visualize being on the stage. And we come together six months later. I got hired on the spot because I put together a Jackie Wilson tribute, and they hired me, and I, that's, that, was, that started me with, with Paul. Uh, once I started working with Legends in Concert with Paul Revere and John Stewart, of course, Paul uh, was very good friends with Dick Clark. So call, Paul asked Dick for some of the videos so that I can at least get a look at Jackie and what he did. Dick Clark said no. <laughs> he said no? He said no. And they were partners. <laughs> they owned like two or three nightclubs or uh, venues together. So he, Dick said no, nobody gets the videos. And at the time, there was no YouTube. And so he goes, no, 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 those are my videos and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so I couldn't believe it. And Dick Clark came to the show and goes, yeah, the kid is Jackie Wilson. And he said, wow, the, the kid is Jackie Wilson. And he, he says, I don't know how you did that. He goes, I don't know how we did it. And Paul never asked me about my background. Nobody ever asked me when I worked with the show about the background. So he sends me to Atlantic City. He says, listen, Popper, Jackie Wilson was super big on the East Coast. I'm sending you to the East Coast. You're in Hawaii, but I'm sending you to the East Coast. Hawaii was 90 You went from Hawaii to Atlantic City. Yeah, because I was in Hawaii. That's where I lived. You know, and I yes, got, that's right. I got yeah. married again in Hawaii. But, you went, but, they sent, but they picked the place for you to go. On the yes, East Paul Coast, because your dad, Paul Revere, says Atlantic City, and the late Paul Revere, I had a chance to interview him at the uh, Hilton next door to us. What a great, great man. He's a great so man. now you end up in Atlantic City, and you're at Bally's in Legends. So, you know, Le- Legends had the time. They had 15 shows around the country, and, and like I said, Paul Revere was uh, part owner, and Paul said, uh, you know, I'm sending you to Atlantic City. That's when... That's where your people are. That's what he said. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, even though I did a good job in Hawaii, he felt I'd be a, a greater impact uh, on the East Coast. He was right. As soon as I got there, the word got out to everybody on the East Coast as a Jackie Wilson guy in this legend show. But it, it, it didn't impact nobody. But the, at the, the first week I got there, the Four Tops were there performing at Valley. And... Um, let me back up a little bit. Paul loved me so much, he um, made me his uh, personal assistant and assistant, uh, and he also made me assistant uh, to him for the Legends show. So Paul started teaching me the business like a father. He, he was a father to me. Uh, and then Paul introduced me to Bill Medley, who I started working for also. Righteous and he became brothers. a second father to me. 
So let mm-hmm. me, so now let me fast forward. So I'm in Atlantic City, and um, I'm doing, you know, getting ready to perform, and I see these shadows in the back of the room, but I don't know who they are. We're rehearsing my show. I don't pay attention. I do my show a couple of times, and uh, next thing I know, the entertainment director said, listen, I need you to go up and meet the four tops. They need to meet you. <sighs> And I'm thinking, oh, great, I get to meet the four tops. You know, Levi like, Stubbs. <laughs> yeah. So it's <laughs> Levi Stubbs, um, Lawrence Payton, Obi, and Duke. They're all up there, and they're waiting for me. There's a, a Jim, Escher, Jim Escher was was our entertainment director at the time. And Jim Escher walked me up, and he said, uh, don't say anything. Let me do the talk, and blah, blah, blah. Okay, oh, whatever. I get up there, and uh, Levi Stubbs looked me in the face, and he goes, he goes, boy, you have to get up early in the morning to, to be like my cousin. And he goes, you're exactly like my cousin. And and, and then uh, Lawrence Payton, you know, looked at me and says, you got to be family. Nobody can duplicate Jackie like that. Where are you from? Lawrence Payton is the first one to ask me, where are you from? Tell me where you're from. Who are your parents? And that's when my story began with the, the four tops. And I'm sitting in the green room telling them my story, and they're astonished. And Levi turned around and goes, I, I, you, you're family. I know you're family. He said, it's just figuring it out, but you're family. On that meeting, they contacted my family, the Wilsons, I should say, and some of the Wilsons. And, but they did contact uh, my cousin, my dad's cousin, uh, Roquel Billy Davis. He's responsible for co-writing all the songs with Barry Gordy and a million careers in show business. I'm talking about Earth, Wind, and Fire, Aretha Franklin, uh, Donnie Hathaway. This man is responsible for uh, Jim, uh, Johnny Mathis, a couple of hits for Elvis. I mean, this man is responsible for so much, and he was original for Top with Levi. His name is Billy Roquel Davis. Uh, he owns a publishing company uh, in uh, New York called Chevis Publishing. And Billy is responsible for writing over 20,000 commercials for Erickson wow. McCain. Named the big one song was the Coca-Cola song for Coca-Cola Bottling Company. I like to teach the world thing and songs like that. He uh, He's responsible for all of that. But Billy uh, and Jackie, of course, my dad was first cousins. And he, they called him up and said, you got to come see this kid. So Billy travels from New York to see me. And he was so, he was just going to watch the show and leave. That's what he told Levi and them. I'll just go and see what this guy looks like and leave. And, um, but when Billy saw me, he was so blown away by me. He had the maitre d' uh, pull me aside, took me to lunch, and Billy's the guy that dug into me and became another mentor for me and dug into me and found out who I was and where I came from because he, he kept saying it's too much of a coincidence he says, I have to keep telling myself that you're not Jackie. He says, he says the way you talk, the way you laugh, your, your enunciation, everything is Jackie. And he said, and, and I noticed that his skin looked like he, had, he was cold. I said, I said, Billy, you all right? You, you look cold. He goes, no, I got chicken skin because you're so much like my cousin. So we got wow. into it about uh, my mother. Did I know my mother? Blah, blah, blah. Turns out Billy knew my mother. And um, and he he was on the road a few times with Jackie when they were in uh, on Chitlin Circuit, and he he met my mother through the Chitlin Circuit. And one thing led to another. Uh, later years later, the DNA was done, and uh, uh, the, the family just really took to me and said and, and loved what I was doing, and really um, supports me as far as promoting uh, Jackie Wilson's music as well as my own. And, um, I, you know, when I started off, you know, I had no way of realizing that my road would end this way. It was mm-hmm. Peter Hernandez and the Love Notes and Bruno's dad who, who really pushed me into show business. But once I got into show business, I, it, was, I was, it was a bug. I couldn't I, – I wanted to get the best vocal lessons. I wanted to get in shape. I wanted to look the best I can look. and 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 the way I dressed, the way I did my makeup and hair, I didn't realize that I was taken from my father who was already locked when he was in show business. He couldn't get him off stage. It's, it's a saying that they they say my dad was the last stage whore, which 
people mm-hmm. used to call me came for mm-hmm. because once I get on stage, I can't leave. I won't leave unless you kick me off. And most people don't want to kick me off because I just get on and I and, and my soul and my spirit is, is light up with the music, and off I go. And um, and of course, uh, so many people who knew my dad, including family members, say. There's, even some of the brothers and sisters says I'm so jealous because you're so much like Dad, mm. and I was nowhere. I wasn't around him, uh, and you know I didn't grow up around him like like a lot of them did. But they would say uh, they still say I'm so jealous that you you sound like Dad. I'm so jealous you look like Dad. I'm no, so, you look like him. You yeah, are. So jealous, I mean, so spitting you know, image, man. But but then. The, the, but let me go a, a, a step beyond it. When I do my shows on the cruise ship, or, or um, I'm going to be at the Metropolitan Live uh, next week, and people walk in, and you know, and most of the time when people come to see me who've never seen me, they're you know, I don't know if the word is optimistic, but whatever it is, but they're 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 curious. Can this guy sing? Is this guy holds and blah blah blah? And by the, by the time I do the first song, they're screaming, Jackie. Mm-hmm. And and it's and I, I don't think it's because I sound like my dad, even though people say I do. I think it's it's so much of me that reminds them of him, and his stage presence. Uh, um, Levi said to me, he says, "Your daddy gave you everything he had. It's like he transferred it all to you. Everything he had on stage, everything he had in his personality, he gave it to you. It's your gift. It's your legacy." And Levi uh, was the first one to do that. Now, I still, Levi, of course, passed on, and so has yeah. um, Lawrence Payton and Obi. But I still talk to Duke, you know, from time to time, especially when he's in town. He he uh, he makes me sing uh, Sugar Pie. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> when What's your favorite when song of your dad? What's your favorite song of your dad? Do you have one? Because I my have dad, one. My dad's favorite song uh, is uh, Nobody But You. I don't know if you ever heard that song. But it was uh, it, it it was about it was going to be released right before his heart attack, and I believe it would have put him back in the mainstream. That album, um, nobody but you. But um, it's a it's a ballad about you know nobody really cares about you, but this one person. It could have been really a gospel song, uh, but it's a real strong song that I relate to. Uh, the many times. And God bless my mom who raised me, but, you know, she went through a period where she was um, had a, a bad spot in her life. And at times, at times when we were growing up in the foster home, she would, she would say, but, but she didn't mean it because she was, she was inebriated, but she would say, nobody wants you but me. And you wouldn't be here. The only reason why you're here is because nobody wants you. And she would say that to us, but she only said that when she got inebriated. She was an angel when she wasn't, and, and she finally gave up drinking. But when she would drink, she would say that. And um, and it, I didn't think it hurt me. But I realized later in life it did. It it, it, uh, it was ingrained inside of my soul. But for the, the grace of God, I was allowed not to let that bother me or stop me. As a matter of fact, the more people were negative towards me, the harder I worked. Mm-hmm. Uh, the more people said, oh, you don't sound like Jackie Wilson. You shouldn't do it. I, I worked harder to do it. That's not mm-hmm. like, when Paul Revere said, you need to be my Jackie Wilson, about 10 times the number of people said, there's no way in the world you can do Jackie Wilson. That's you know? always going to happen. And, you got to so, not think about those people. Yeah. And look what happened. Look how great you, look what you're doing now. You're unbelievable. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And it's the grace of God. And, 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 and um, I thank my mother who raised me for what she put inside of me because she would say to us, uh, when she, you know, when she had herself together, she would say to us, "There's no excuses. God put you here for a reason. You need to find out what that reason is and keep getting up. Don't depend on nobody. Don't depend on me. Don't depend on your brothers and sisters. You depend on God and you, and you will get through this world." And one of the things she used to tell me, which really stuck stuck with me, is, "I got, I got this on my own, and you can too." And you can build your life and move forward. And so uh, she used to say, you guys are all special. Uh, that's why you're here. So, you know, um, God picked you this way and chose you to live this way because you got a mission. 
And I believe my mission is the music, and especially the music of my father. The happiness that people uh, around the world that I've seen when I go to the U.K., when I go on cruise ships, when I do the shows in, in Jersey, D.C., and, 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 and uh, New York area, it's amazing the response that the people who remember my dad. And uh, so uh, when I do this show next week, and thank you for having me on, at the Metropolitan, 25th, 930, plus, plus, plus. <laughs> In New York City, <laughs> Metropolitan is a great room, nice, I'm, intimate I'm, room. You I'm, need I'm, to get up there to see them. Right. Uh, not only I'm going to show you me, but I'm going to definitely uh, do my a lot of my dad's music, especially his big, big hits. And I hope that um, the people who, who come out really enjoy it and, and see my father and me. I don't try to, to impersonate him. I don't try to... Uh, Copy him, I just be me, and he seems to naturally come out when I'm myself. So um, come on out, have a good time with me. Uh, those who who saw me at the Tropicana um, and was raving and wanted me to come back, hey, you got a chance to see me in New York, all those New Yorkers that came down. So um, um, I would love, I, I can't wait to get back to the East Coast. I love, I love New York City. I love Atlantic City. And, um, and Tropicana. I, I, need a res- I need a residency there. I need a residency see, see, in Atlantic City. <laughs> that's right. You know why? Because he'd come in, and we could use these two words, baby workout. Hey, baby workout. That's a big song, man. <laughs> baby work- that's my favorite song, okay, except for dogging around. But 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 but, but baby, baby workout is my favorite film. Jackie Wilson song. Now, that song, uh, that song um, was written for one of the daughters um, who had polio, uh, Sabrina. Uh, Jackie, um, uh, one of my older sisters, she had polio, but every time she would hear uh, one of our uh, father's songs on the radio, she would start dancing. And uh-huh. he and he wrote the song "Baby Work Out" because of her. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, and she, and so uh, she cries and boohoo's every time she hears that song because um, she was a little girl when the song was written. But uh, every time one of his songs would come on the radio, she would start dancing and. And, and she had polio, and she was still danced through it. And uh, he wrote the song they to work out for, for Sabrina. So that's a big, big song. Him and Alonzo Tucker. Alonzo Tucker was the guitar player for Hank Ballard and also wrote a lot of Hank Ballard songs. We invite you to go to the website, Bobby Brooks Wilson, for everything Bobby Wilson. You'll be able to get merch. Tour dates, and the tour dates are important because you got to get out and see them. He's playing everywhere, so you'll get a chance. We want to have you back here on the show, Bobby Wilson. You are the best. Here's a little track from Bobby Wilson. Broadcasting live on News Talk 1400 WOND South Jersey to the world. This is the Mark Berman Radio Show.